Praised be Jesus and Mary. It's a great grace for us all to be gathered here this morning to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass on a feast or memorial of one of our great saints, Saint Polycarp, especially in the context of yesterday's trip to London, hearing of the many martyrs in this land. Today we celebrate another martyr, one burnt at the stake, and a dear man who at 86 years old responded to the Roman consul who urged him to renounce Christ to save his life and he's already 86 and the consul tries to tempt him that he can enjoy this earthly life without Christ. St. Polycarp beautifully said, for 86 years I have served him and he has never wronged me. He's never done evil to me. How can I renounce the king who has saved me? And he willingly offered his life in testimony to the truth, to the faith. It's always interesting when we are confronted with God's word, when the Lord speaks to us, the way we can respond to accept his words, to listen to his words, or to reject them. And we might be able to even divide history according to whether or not God's holy word is accepted or rejected. Today, the Lord spoke of persecution, of the world hating the disciples of Christ. And I imagine it must have been difficult for the disciples to hear these words. Accustomed, as we know, they thought in an earthly way about God's kingdom, that it would be a place of privilege, a place of honor, a place of power, and our Lord had to constantly combat this mentality. He had to reveal to them the cross. And in the face of the cross, we either accept it as part of our life, or we reject it and even go so far as to persecute those who would preach to us that this life has suffering as part of it. Or to follow God, we must be willing to renounce ourselves. But I think it's always important to remember that God does never wish suffering or death or penance or mortification as an end in itself. It is not delight in our suffering. But we know because of the fall, it is the cross that is the great medicine for our lives. It purifies us of our self-love. It enables us to say yes to God. It gives us the grace for his life to flourish in the soul. And that is the object of all of God's providence in our lives, to have his life flourishing in the soul. And in a sense, St. Polycarp knew this in a profound way because even in the face of this torture, this death of burning at a stake, he said, I praise you for all things, the good and the bad. So perhaps we can ask him today to pray for us. In fact, in the collect, the opening prayer, we pray that his prayers, St. Polycarp's prayers, would give us the courage to share with him the cup of suffering, but then to rise to eternal glory. And that is what we have to keep our eyes on when we are under the cross, as it were, pressed by our sufferings, our difficulties, our weaknesses, or even persecutions in the very real sense, of it, as we have seen in the history of England, you know, to remember the reward of eternal life that awaits us, the eternal glory, the prize that God wishes to grant to his faithful servants. So we ask St. Polycarp today 
to pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.